Hi guys, it's Camel Thomas from 4Plenty and I will go back 15 years in time to review my old game dev projects. I'll add up with tips and advice that I wish I knew back then. So you will have a head start when you start on your first projects. These tips could also be used outside of Scratch. Scratch is a simplified Java engine designed to get kids into coding. You simply create an account and you could start making projects and share them with the world. You could pick sprites and sounds from our library or draw them yourself because she was so good at making comics also. When you get to the code aspect you simply drag and drop blocks to create all sorts of outcomes like moving your player sprite. But it really just teaches you how to structure your code similar to other coding languages. Okay, I'm gonna tell you the most game dev YouTuber thing ever. Keep your ideas simple. But hold on, it gets better. My hard rockin' amigo! What? I started with some sort of Pong-like game, but many of my projects had ideas that were way too ambitious for my current skill set and attention span. Instead of starting with like a next big RPG, focus on like one aspect of that. See if you can make an economic system for like an economic game or a combat system for like a combat game, like keep it simple. For fuck's sake. For real, literally half of my projects are all incomplete projects because they didn't have working shops, they didn't have working combat. The basic foundation of a game, the essential so to say, a mechanic, objectives and a goal. Well, you could say that there are more things to making a good game, but we're not talking about a good game, we're talking about a game. So, what if you would like to improve your art, because this shit looks garbage? Try a color palette! I didn't do that, I didn't use color palettes, I just used the standard colors from scratch. Which look pretty bad, you know? You could also use the sprites that are offered in the library of scratch but those are also pretty bad in my opinion but we have the internet you can go to open game art and download a kenny pack for example certainly not what i did i went to spriter's resource where i downloaded a bunch of nintendo assets and then made a lot of pokemon games which of course you can sell for profit I don't support privacy and, and this, this is not real, this is not my other half of, of projects that I made, that's not true. That was just fake news. But I can't be too harsh on myself, right? I was 8 years old back then. The fact that I even found something like Scratch and didn't cause any viruses is some sort of achievement by itself. To be honest, I'm kinda happy I started back in 2007, when adults were all like, Oh shit, that kid's learning code, that's so cool! While now adults would be like, Whoa, that's cool, person the same age as I am, I'm a waiter. Oh, what you waiting for? Well, the same things everyone's waiting for, for Hell's Mouth to release on Steam. Oh, you mean the game I'm currently working on, that's going to be released in April 2024? Yes. The Stone of Fueled single player RPG called Hell's Mouth. Go and slip Hell's Mouth on Steam. Like, subscribe with the algorithm for plenty. That could be the end, but it isn't. Information on doing game dev has never been so accessible as it is today. There are game engines like Unity, Unreal, and Kado, which are all free, that you can use for your next indie project. There are also great tutorials on YouTube that you can watch for free. I heard Brecky's tutorials are really good, but I don't use Unity, I use Construct 2. It's an HTML5 based engine. Well, if you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't already. Leave a comment about your favorite video games or any question you have. I'll see you next time. I upload a video about game dev every week, so stay tuned for that. I also make devlogs. Yeah, I'll see you next time. Watch this devlog. It's my first.